web apps have been shifting client side for like better user experience, um, more responsiveness, and more native feel. So there's a lot more JS JavaScript right now. How many of you write significant amounts of it? How many of you use a framework for it? Cool. That, that's actually a significant number. So um, out of this talk, I'm, I'd, like you, I'd like you to know what client-side frameworks are, how to evaluate them, so, um, where to look for documentation tutorials, and sort of a thousand foot view of backbone integration. This isn't going to be a really long talk, so I can't really get into the details. Um, so why would you use a framework? You want to use something to organize your JavaScript. Um, intertwined business and presentation logic isn't really very exciting. And there's probably a lot of repeated stuff around. And um, so the DOM's a handy place to store info, and a lot of JavaScript ends up being um, really nested jQuery callbacks. So that's, if, if, if you've ever seen a lot of messy JavaScript, this is a good way to fix it. So there are a lot of other frameworks out, like probably 50 or more or something. So some of the major ones. Um, Spine's probably the closest to Backbone. It's written in CoffeeScript. And it's lighter, a little more different. Um, something Spine does differently is who, ha um, is who handles a lot of the business logic. Spine moves it more to the client side. So all server requests are asynchronous. They don't really happen that often. So it's not the easiest to integrate with an existing Rails app, but it's great if you want to do a lot of stuff client side. Um, Ember used to be Sprout, um, used to be Sprout Core. It's really feature rich. There's a lot going on for it. It do, it follows a lot of the um, convention over configuration. So if you're into Ruby, maybe that's your thing. Knockout. It's it's a little different from the rest of them because it's not MVC. It's MVVM. So it what Knockout really does well is that it excels at data binding templates. Um, there's like a whole scripting language in the HTML, so you can you can bind things really well. JavaScript MVC, it's older. It's one of the oldest um, frameworks out there. It's, got, it's extremely comprehensive. It has, a good te it has tests and everything, so. Yeah, so you don't have to re write them on your own. Um, and Batman, the server is in Node, so that's how it deals with server in integration. So a little bit about Backbone. It's um, written by Jeremy Ashkenaz. I've only seen it read. Um, he's the same guy who wrote CoffeeScript and maintains it. It's fairly lightweight. Um, the source is extremely readable. So if you're, if you're looking into Backbone, I suggest that you start reading the source first because the docs are less, um, they're not as good as introducing you to it. Um, it's extremely flexible. You can override everything. You have options for doing anything you ever want to do. And what it excels at is integrating with um, a RESTful API. Its only hard dependency is underscore, and it uses either jQuery or Zepto, which you probably have in your app anyway. Um, this is the official blurb from the docs. I've highlighted a couple of the important words. I'll let you read through it. So the components of Backbone. There's a model, maintain state. There's a collection, which Backbone separates from a model, which is pretty handy. There's a view. A router kind of takes the place of a, um, of a controller. It's similar to routes.rb in Ruby. History deals with um, dispatching URL changes to the router. And sync is how, um, is how it interacts with the server, and underscore and jQuery. So here's kind of an overview of how things fit together. It's a pretty picture. Um, between the server, sync deals with AJAX requests there. A collection is a, some sort of a sorted order of models, sorted collection of models. And the models and the views are bound um, by, by a hash that you can declare that maps URL um, that maps events to, to actual actions on the model. And then that's bound to the, um, the browser through jQuery. And that's, how use, and that's how your user interacts with it. So models and collections. You create a backbone model by um, calling extend on it. 
And that provides you with getters and setters and attributes, and you can initialize that with JSON. Um, and it may be kind of unusual to separate the collection from the model, but in practice, it's super useful because a lot of the actions you do are usually on collections more than they are on individual models. You'll probably be interacting more with collections in the long run than you do with um, any individual model. And it's also neat because if you give it a comparator, it will maintain a collection order when you add models to it, and you can filter it. You can ask it for all models that have some property. The views, they're not technically MVC views, since they're not the templates themselves. They're more view classes. Um, so each view is bound to some element in the DOM, and you can specify the tag name and the class name or the element directly, and you override render to create the view, and that function is called whenever a view is, um, whenever a view is trying to be created. And you, you create a hash that delegates events to add event handlers to your element. And the router, this is what connects um, the browser state to your app. So it provides methods so you can route client-side pages. So you can give it variables and, or, um, or splats, and it'll call the, um, call the function on it. And history is what deals with um, dispatching this to the router. Sync is the magic behind interacting with the server. It defaults to Ajax, but you can override the sync method, so it, usually, it uses local store or pretty much anything you want it to. And those are the options on the default one. There's a lot of information in these slides. I didn't mean to cover everything since it's a 15-minute talk. They're available online. I heard you like JavaScript, so I, that's what this talk is written in. So an overview of integration with Rails. Um, you limit the, the interface is limited to a JSON REST API. So if you've got that already in your app, then you're pretty much set to go. Um, file organization. Instead of sticking everything into an application.js, you can spread it out across folders and, it'll, um, and the asset pipeline or your pre-Rails 3.0 public JavaScript will serve it up. So this is, what it looks, um, this is what the interaction between Rails and Backbone looks like. The model gets information from the controller um, the backbone model gets information from the Rails controller and then um, provides that information to the view, which deals with updating templates inside, the, um, inside whatever Rails template you have. So, um, the, you don't really need a one-to-one -one mapping between your Rails models and your um, backbone models, since there's a lot of stuff you might do client-side that you don't necessarily want to store in a server but you do need one um, Rails controller per, your back, per, backbone model, per backbone model. I had too much coffee. Um, each, backbone, each backbone view is bound to an element in the DOM, and you should use some sort of templating engine. It comes, backbone comes with underscores, so that's a handy thing to use. The only gotcha that you might want to deal with is if you're mixing um, your Rails templates with your backbone templates in one file, you want to change the, um, the variable indicator on that because both, um, because er Hamel also uses the little percent equals to denote um, Ruby code. So there are a lot of, there are a lot of resources online um, to get to know Backbone. There's documentation, there's the annotated source code, which is where I recommend starting. It's well written, easy to read, and also underscore doc, document, um, and then there's a lot of tutorials online about this. There's a neat blog post about where the JavaScript code goes. There are a couple, there are a couple of really neat tutorials you can follow instead of the usual to-do app. There's um, Cloud Edit, is sort of a Google Docs really quickly written up in, in Backbone. And a couple of paid resources if you're into that. You can buy a book. There's an online book. And then a pitch. So I work for Anything Social, and we're developing a website called zembosa.com in addition to other things. It's, um, it's an astrology application that lets you see your friends' horoscopes, how they interact with you. It's neat. If you want cute little sentences to send around, or if you're into astrology, you should check it out. Thank you.